Usually it's never good to, in, to intentionally make somebody feel insecure around you. Um, because the difference between that insecurity and the insecurity that I'm going to be talking about in this video is that the first insecurity, they will respond to, um, to the sense of insecurity with, with attacking you because you become a threat. Right? They would do whatever they can to feel secure, even if it means attacking and hurting you. This type of insecurity comes not from validation or the desire to get validation from you, but rather it, you are just reflecting to them their shortcoming and, and, be, and you have become a threat. That is not what I'm talking about. That's abusive. Um, it is offensive. It is, and that is completely disrespectful to do this. What I'm talking about is you want them to feel a need for you. You want them to feel a need around you, a need that you can meet. The safety you give them, the sense of acceptance that they feel in your presence, once they leave you, reveals a sense of discon discontent inside. So once you return, they'll have a sense of, I don't want to feel that lack anymore. And so, what, and, and so because of that, it creates an underlying insecurity, a natural insecurity. It's like the child who loves his mother and doesn't want to get away from her. They may have a perfectly healthy relationship, but the point is, is that it's, his love creates an insecurity that, that pushes that kid to want to be around his mother. So it's very important that you guys understand this because every time I make this type of video, people seem to never really hear what I just said to you guys. And the reason why it's this, everyone possesses a delic delicate ego that remains concealed beneath a facade of security on the outside. And behind this mask, we wear, the, behind the mask we wear, lies the feeling of uncertainty and emptiness. Every single one of us. Your task then is to unearth the, these doubt and anxiety, leveraging them to guide individuals towards success through your influence. So, and, and the beauty about this is that when people genuinely like you, when, when they have a, an affinity for you, this happens naturally. In fact, you can potentially open up wounds in a person without even knowing it because they like you so much. You make them feel so you're so com they're so comfortable in your presence that your absence reveals a deep state of unhappiness. So by seeding the uh, moments of insecurity and hesitation, you position yourself as their rescuer, akin to a guardian figure. The sensation of lacking and yearning forms the foundation of all aspirations. This void in their mind becomes the space where you could introduce your charm, your presence, and your love, which would then entice them to enter your realm. Absent anxiety, without this anxiety, this can, you, you can't do this. And this anxiety is a reflection of how much they like you of how much they depend on you, or better yet, how much you fulfill in them, right? Because any addict will tell you that when you get a hit of your drug, when you don't have the hit of your drug, you feel anxiety. And you only feel anxiety because you are addicted to that. And so in your very nature, in just who you are, you create this type of anxiety. That's why you don't have to try so hard. You really don't. You just have to be very cognizant of overexposing yourself, of, of being too polite, of, of not really being yourself around them is what really causes this to backfire on you. Let me explain to you why. You see, naturally when you like people, what, what you don't notice about people who like you a lot is that they're very sensitive, right? Um, they have a hypersensitivity to to the signals you send out, um, and and this hypersensitivity tends to create illusions in their minds where they see things that are not there. Um, where if you don't text them for a few hours, they start thinking that maybe you found someone, or maybe you didn't sleep over with them that night when you always do, and now they're saying maybe sh they're losing interest, you know. And so this hypersensitivity comes about 
because of how much they like you and because how much they realize that when they when you when they're not around you they feel anxious right it's 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 that anxiety that makes the the love so interesting so sparky so so captivating without that anxiety it won't be exciting it just it just won't you know it just won't and by you, so you so falling in love with someone naturally creates soft spots in them right and it makes the soft spots even softer and they'll they'll pay attention to the slightest change in your behavior and this deepening of paying attention is what is, inspires them to be romantic this deepening of paying attention is what allows them to remember your birthdays. That's why it's a red flag when they forget those little things. It's this deepening of attention to you is what makes that makes them um, want to impress you. Is what makes them remember the little things about you. Is what flatters you, pretty much, right? And this happens because you become a mirror to them, right? Um, your your mere presence is placing a mirror in front of them from which they can see their emptiness. Right, they become aware of that lack, so that you can fill it. At the uh, on the other on the other hand, right. And the reason why is this is because people are very lazy, right. They're always looking for somebody else to fulfill them. They're always looking for that magic elixir, always looking for that improvement without putting effort. And so the desire to have somebody fill our emptiness is a weakness that we all prey on each other with. Because if, they, if people didn't have this lack inside, nobody will seduce each other. Nobody will need a partner. Nobody will need to get married if they, everyone is fulfilled. People only fall in love and only deeply and obsessively fall in love when there's a lack in their lives. It's just that simple. Without that lack, I don't care. You know, If you're a moral person, then too bad for you. Too bad for you. right? Because even Jesus said, all of you that are weak, all of you that are unhappy, come to you. Jesus didn't say, all you happy motherfuckers come over. No. No. He wants, you know, even Jesus said from the mouth of babes um, 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 comes the kingdom of heaven. Give me your weak. Give me your lame. Give me your this, your that. And the reason why that is, is because the unfulfilled, the ones that need something are the ones that are easily seduced. The ones that are seduced are the ones that want to be seduced. <clears throat> so there's plenty of people that this works on. This works on you, this works on me. In fact, the feeling of insecurity is a very thrilling feeling because you have no control over it. And that's what makes it so much fun. If you let go of the control and are not afraid to get hurt, these type of experiences are very, very, very pleasurable, right? So remember, <clears throat> the insecure and unhappy are the most common emotional voice that people have. Insecurity and unhappiness, right? And because of that, they are suckers for validation. I'm a sucker for validation. If you're a hopeless romantic, you're also a sucker for validation. And, and it's very difficult to disguise this. It's very hard to disguise this, right? And so by you filling that void, you have a lot of great power. And, 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 and this is the funny part, right? Is... The way to do this is just just be honest. And let me get let me explain to you guys, right? I bet you guys, what the fuck does he mean, honest? I never heard him say that word. <laughs> this is why. When when like I said, people are hypersensitive to you when they like you. Okay? They're hypersensitive. They see things that are not there. Um, they even notice your little facial expressions. They even they, they notice everything. Like a child who needs to impress his parents. They notice all of the little things that you do, right? And one of the things about people is that people who naturally pull away, people who naturally take a step back, they never take obvious step backs. In other words, they don't just say, they don't just stop responding to you for two days. They don't just ghost you on a date, right? That What that does, it inspires resentment and you want to get revenge. The pulling away that partners do when it's a good relationship is subtle. Maybe they you notice them hesitating to kiss you. Maybe they don't sleep over as much as they used to. Maybe they there's a certain like lack, like there's a less emotion when you're around them. Maybe they talk a little bit less. Maybe their body language is usually facing you. Now their body language is slightly turned in this direction. Things that are not noticeable, but if you're hyper vigilant, if you're hyper aware, you're gonna notice that and make connections that are not even there. That 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 that's just what's gonna happen, right? 
And what tends to happen, though, is that when you like someone, this is once is something that doesn't happen. You stop being honest with them. You stop criticizing them when you feel like they do something wrong. You don't show them that they're mad when you're mad. They don't clean the dishes, and because you like them, you don't tell them that they got to clean the dishes. When you want to when you want to go on a date, but then you change your mind, you don't change your mind. You just go because you don't want them to feel bad, right? Um, you you don't desire your own space, and even when you desire your own space, you don't express it. You don't have those uncomfortable conversations, people. Uncomfortable conversations, talks that you have to have with your partners. You know what they are. Everyone has them. Uncomfortable conversations creates a reconciliation after you guys talk about it that actually strengthens the bonds that you have. But in that moment of having those tough conversations, insecurities come up. And then once you guys talk about it, naturally you can, you're, you're going to feel a visceral feeling of almost like stitching up a wound. And that brings them closer to you. Even, even if you start acting sporadic because maybe you're a little bit more busy at work what you will notice is that you're they're gonna be they're gonna they're gonna um they're gonna catch those cues they're gonna notice those cues those signals that you're sending that you may not even notice but they're noticing that now you're taking a little bit longer to respond and what you'll notice is that they, they may not express anger but the, what you'll notice is that their actions they'll want to see you more they want to be more physically close to you um you just notice that they're just more aggressive Right, and this is why, when you feel insecure, your body goes into fight or flight, right? And one of the things that happens with people is that when they feel insecure, they they, re, they start getting aggressive. They aggressively try to regain your attention, aggressively try to win you over, and that what that's when I'm talking about when they start being romantic, and they start doing things that that they that you wanted them to do before. And a lot of the times this happens when the person is genuinely losing interest or genuinely stopped liking them. And now all of a sudden, once they stop liking them, they want them. And you're like, dude, I don't want you no more. Chick, girl, I don't want you no more. But it's only because now you're, you're allowing them to feel insecure in your presence. When you like someone, this is something that you don't do. You really don't. It, honestly, you just don't. You start doing this, you start doing exactly what I said once you mentally check out. Once you say, you know what, I got to break up with this person, but I don't know how to tell them. So in the next few days, weeks or months, you start being there, but you're not really there. Like your body's there, but your mind is not. And they're going to notice it. And you're going to notice them doing, do, doing more. The person who was cold all of a sudden is the warm one. That's just how that works. So the key to this is, like I said, just be honest with them. Don't lie about your exes. Yeah, she, if, if you know, don't lie about it. If if you usually date girls, like, for example, like an example is like, is, is if you usually date girls with big butts and she doesn't have big butts, a big butt is, that's an example, right? A lot of times a guy will, hide his preferences because he doesn't want to offend her offend her and vice versa right and she's dating a guy she dates black guys and now she's dating bob the programmer maybe she won't tell him that she dates black guys right but one of the things that happens when you don't like the person is that you are more comfortable revealing those things honestly you're more comfortable because you don't give a fuck what they think and and this is why it's so hard to pinpoint why is it that the people we want don't want us back and vice versa it's because the things that you do when you don't want the person are so subtle that you can't really, it's almost like you're acting the same, but you don't know what you're doing different. What's going on is that there's a pattern that's happening. There's a pattern that you're not aware of. And that's, and it's this, is that when you like someone, you're actually just more, you're less honest with them in terms of the things that could hurt them. You, you sort of cradle them and protect them from the truth. And this happens with me. Like, if somebody leaves the dishes dirty or somebody leaves my apartment dirty, I, part of me won't tell won't tell them. As a, as you know, leave. Got to be more confrontational. But every time that I've dated a girl, that she called me out on my bullshit. There's a. It always made me feel insecure. 
And that insecurity always led me to see her differently in a positive light. It always does. It just always does. It always does. You know? So that's why you shouldn't be afraid. Call them out. You don't have to lie to people and manipulate them. Call them out on their bullshit. You know, if they're always late, say that. You let them know. Have a have a have a conversations. Have conversations. In the first few months, you gotta have conversations with people. Tough conversations. Because you're you're always gonna be you're always gonna encounter friction. And if you don't call it out, you're sending a sign of weakness. You have to have those conversations. They only bring you power. They only make them like you more. And if they don't and if and if they if they get offended or if they don't want to talk and have those conversations, then that's your cue to leave. Cause this is not gonna get any better. It's not like all of a sudden they're gonna to wanna to have a conversation. And this is the thing. If you use the strategy and they don't notice you're pulling away, or they don't notice that now you're not as enthusiastic, or that they they don't respond to your um to your coldness with extra warmth it just means that they don't care enough to pay attention they feel that your your absence does not make them feel insecure and that's your cue that tells you that they don't care like when when, when somebody genuinely loves you and values you at a, almost any unpredictable act that you do instills terror in their minds it's still terror because ter because it's it's almost like losing a loved one like they 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 genuinely love you and 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 your unpredictable nature like tortures them inside and so that's why these strategies reveal they reveal what's inside and this is how you do it right this insecurity is always there when they stop loving you, you'll notice the insecurity goes out the window. And they start acting in a more distant way that that just creates a sense of anxiety inside of you. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you do it, people. Um, this, is, this is something that happens naturally. And all we're doing is that we're stopping the natural process because we don't want to hurt their feelings. We don't want them to feel bad. Don't give a fuck. If you have to offend them because they they they're all, they always leave the dishes dirty, let them know. An example was like I had a classmate named Brad in art school, and <laughs> this shows you the difference in my personality, right? Um, I have a we had like our tissues to clean the the brushes, and they kept using his. And I remember the second day of class, he was like he was like guys, don't use my brush. I mean, don't use my paper towels no more. Go get your own. He told the whole class that. And we were like, holy shit. But I remember the sensation that I felt was that now I want to, it made me feel, it made me act nicer towards him because I, I know, I now know he has that side. So you're a little bit more cautious around him. And this actual caution, if you really observe the feeling of it, it's almost like your, your emotions are more nimble. It's almost like your emotions are more shakable. You could shake your, you could, it's like, there's almost like a fear of triggering that side of him. And, and it's felt in the desire to, rather than trigger that more nasty side, I want to trigger that happy side. And you can see how that, cre that insecurity makes me treat them with respect a little bit more because I don't want to see that nasty side of them because I know there's a nicer side. But then when that happens to me, for personally, I don't mind, honestly. I, it's, it's in my personality to give people stuff, you know what I'm saying? But if I was in his position, I would, I would, I would not t t tell people that. I would not, you, you know? Like, I would keep it to myself. It would be good if I did, though, right? And then it just shows you my own insecurities. But the truth is, human nature, people don't push you away because of that. In fact, they respect you more. It's the complete opposite. Your emotions tell you and give you the illusion that it's the opposite. But the truth is, if you actually observe your experience, if somebody does it to you, you'll notice that you're actually more receptive to them. Just people, man. What do you, I didn't make people, man. That's how people are. Anyways, if you guys want to learn more about this, you guys can work with me one-on-one -on -one to get one-on-one -on -one coaching, okay? And I'll see you guys later. And um, and by the way, um, yeah, see you guys later. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys ever want to learn how to use your feminine energy, 
to influence people, learn how to use your masculine energy to become more assertive, and also learn how to blend both energies to improve your dating life, your spiritual life, honestly, um, your relationship life, your family life, your career life, this is the course for you. If I had to make a course for my nieces, I have two nieces, one is 8, 19, and one is 14, 15, 16, holy shit. Oh my God, he's a bad fucking uncle. He's a, he's a bad uncle. Get him. Shut up, Melissa. You should, you should get this course, right? And this is the course that I will make for them. So for example, watch the curriculum, right? In the first week, we're going to be showing you how to establish a strong masculine foundation without letting it hurt your feminine energy. This masculine foundation is a source of who you are, right? It's, it's your bodyguard. Without this, your, whatever feminine energy you create, will be destroyed by the outside because your your, fem, your masculine is your shield. So we'll talk about goal setting. We'll talk about how to develop a serious attitude. We're going to be talking about how to, um, how to use more logic, how to use more goal-oriented behavior. It's more how to be a man, <laughs> you, know, it, you know? Now, the next one is how to embrace the feminine energy, right? This one, would, this one will teach you about how to minimize excessive masculine traits, developing self-awareness, healing abundant feminine energy, regulating your emotion, vo uh, mastering voice qualities and, ex and facial expressions, surrendering control and allowing pain to be felt. This is honestly, it's, it's, it, it, this will supercharge, like, like, like Kayo Ken, your masculine energy. After that, we have um, femininity in the workplace and how to be feminine in the workplace without letting people take advantage of you and the nuances of um, how women on power should behave versus women who are subordinates in the workplace. And even the dress code, they, they, these are, this is based on psychology, people. It's kind of insane. I'm actually excited about this one. The next week, we talk about navigating the labyrinth of male and female friendship. And this, a lot of women find confusing, so we talk about that. And how to identify envious friends, how to identify the good friends, how to keep male friends, and how to keep female friends. Week five, we talk about how to release the burden of the past and stop and destroy mental projections. This is actually really powerful. Um, and this, and then week six, we talk about how to increase your observational power so that you so that you can read people better. Um, and we have a bunch of bonuses. It, the course starts at um, nine at ninety nine dollars, um, and you guys can pre order the course today at sixty nine dollars before it goes out. Um, if you're watching this, most likely I'm in the meditation retreat, so I really most likely I will be praying for all of you guys. And um, just click on the description down below of the video right there. You'll see it, and you can pre order that course. It's gonna be out by by the end of next month or the beginning of February of of March. One of the two people, because I have a 10-day retreat to do. And I want to I want to finish the course um, after the retreat, because I think the, the ideas are going to be so much better. All right, man, I'll see you guys later. Free order, man. Oh, I'm closing the channel.